Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In one of our previous video, we discussed about uh, the aneurysm rupture and resultant subarachnoid hemorrhage. While discussing the same, I had mentioned that let us make a separate video about the complications of aneurysm clipping. So in this video, let us discuss about all the possible complications of not just aneurysm clipping, but also the SH as such because of rupture of the aneurysm. Do make sure you watch this video till the end so that you get complete information about the same. I mentioned in the previous video that once the aneurysm ruptures and causes subarachnoid hemorrhage, our biggest aim of treatment is to prevent its re rupture. However, there are other complications too and other reasons too why, needs, why this aneurysm needs to be treated. As I told previously, there is a very high risk of re-rupture of the aneurysm because after it has ruptured, the entire thing has become very fragile because of all the reasons I mentioned previously. So, when the entire system is very fragile, it is possible that it can rupture again at any time, including the time when we operate. Now interestingly what you need to understand is that if the aneurysm ruptures uh, as such spontaneously after some time the bleeding stops because of pressure and because of the clotting etc. But when it ruptures when we are operating there is nothing to compress it, it's an open space. So it just keeps on bleeding and trust me when the aneurysm ruptures intraoperatively it is literally like the opening of the dam, the blood just spurts in this case blood not water. So blood just spurts out and fills the entire operative space. Uh, this happens because the blood inside the blood vessel is under very high pressure inside uh, the skull. So it just spurts out and, and, and until we take control of that, it just keeps bleeding. It can even bleed to death. So the biggest risk while operating an aneurysm is intraoperative rupture of the aneurysm. So how do we control that? There are there are different ways we try to control that. We we put what's called as a temporary clip to the source vessel. That is a vessel which is going towards aneurysm. So obviously, if we block the blood flow in that region, the amount of blood reaching the aneurysm decreases, and then it should stop. So we apply what's called as temporary clip. But the biggest challenge is that when it when it bleeds so much. There is literally zero visibility. The entire area is filled with blood. So we need to we need to you know suck out the blood as much as possible and and get some uh, visual of the proximal blood vessel that is a blood vessel before the aneurysm. So we will try to take control of that. And mind you, when we control the bleeding by putting a temporary clip on the proximal vessel, it also means that we are devoiding that much area of the brain its blood supply now as the blood is not reaching the aneurysm it also means that it is not reaching that part of the brain so that also can be hazardous in other words this temporary clip duration has to be as minimal as possible so that the brain does not end up having some permanent damage so the biggest problem is 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 bleeding and the way we have to control the bleeding then the other possibilities are or the other complications are when we apply the clip to the aneurysm neck the visibility may be so poor that inadvertently some other nearby normal blood vessel may get trapped in the clip as a result what happens naturally that blood vessel will not be able to carry blood to the normal part of the brain resultant again same thing that part of the brain may not get the blood supply so that is the other complication uh, part of the brain having a damage called as infarct because of occlusion of the blood vessel while clipping of the aneurysm what happens when a part of the brain does not get blood supply well obviously it will depend on the function of the part of the brain which uh, did not get the blood supply and the complications will vary depending on that uh, if a part of the brain which controls one half of the body 
uh, does not get the blood supply then patient will end up having weakness of that part of the body or what's called as hemiplegia or uh, if the part of the body which is responsible for consciousness or the sensorium uh, gets affected then the patient may go into coma which may be temporary or even permanent if the blood supply gets occluded it is going to be a permanent damage along with all these things there is definitely risk to life as well that is there is risk of death on table as well because of excessive uh, bleeding that can happen uh, a very important thing to note here is that even though i mentioned about all these uh, complications these are i won't say these are uncommon these things can happen but if adequate precautions are taken and if the surgery is done well uh, most of the time these complications don't happen but yes sometimes they can happen as well and a lot of patients ask me about the uh, percentage of risk let me tell you one thing don't really go behind the percentage because if i tell you that uh, the risk percentage is 10% it simply means that 10 out of 100 patients will have the problem and 90 of them don't have but ultimately if it happens to your patient that then it's 100% to you so you will have either 100% or 0% there is nothing called 90% or 80% to you so percentages don't really have much of importance uh, practically coming to the other complications that can happen because of sh uh, due to rupture of an aneurysm uh, one of them we already discussed in our previous video that is vasospasm and its related complications in medical terms is called as vasospasm this is one of a very frequent complication encountered after subarachnoid hemorrhage let's discuss about the other possibilities uh, let's divide the complications into uh, immediate or the short term complications and long term complications in a short term the biggest and the most dangerous complication is re-rupture of the aneurysm which has already been discussed in detail the other problems uh, which can happen are uh, what is called as electrolyte imbalance the most common being uh, decrease or sometimes an increase in the sodium value of the patient uh, most of the time it, it causes hyponatremia and uh, as a result of hyponatremia that is decrease in the sodium level patient can have a variety of problems including altered uh, consciousness vomiting seizures etc but the good thing is that this hyponatremia or decreased sodium can be treated uh, really easily hydrocephalus this uh, can be both a short term or the immediate complication as well as a long term complication let's try to understand what it is and why it happens uh, inside the brain there is a fluid filled space called as ventricle it has a fluid which is called as cerebrospinal fluid when the aneurysm ruptures uh, there is bleeding not just inside the subarachnoid space but the blood can also extend into the ventricles now when the blood is inside the ventricular system along with the CSF as we know the blood has a tendency to clot so as it clots it sort of solidifies so when there is this blood clot inside the ventricular system it can block the flow of CSF and as a result CSF can get accumulated there leading to what is called as hydrocephalus now this is how an acute hydrocephalus develops uh, after subarachnoid hemorrhage however hydrocephalus can also be a long term complication called as chronic hydrocephalus how does this happen so the same thing when there is blood inside the ventricular system if it is not sufficient enough to cause blockage because of the clot uh, initially it, there is going to be normal flow of CSF inside the ventricles but as the days progress the blood uh, degenerates into its particles the RBC and then other degradation products these micro particles flow along with the CSF and then are taken to the terminal point that is the point called as arachnoid villi where these uh, where the CSF is supposed to get absorbed back these small degradation products of blood which are flowing along with the CSF get deposited in uh, this uh, arachnoid villi and they can basically block the reabsorption of CSF this is similar to how, um, how a flow of water if it is carrying a lot of mud or dust particle along with that can go and ultimately uh, block the drainage system this is exactly similar to that uh, the blood degradation products are flowing along with the CSF and are uh, eventually blocking their 
terminal absorption uh, space as this happens over time gradually 10% 20% 30% 40% of the block happens and then eventually uh, the production of CSF becomes much more than the absorption this is when the ventricles start dilating that is the CSF keeps on accumulating inside the brain causing chronic hydrocephalus this will have to be treated with what is called as ventriculoperitoneal shunt operation apart from this there can be a lot of uh, uncommon uh, problems after uh, SH due to rupture of aneurysm let's not go into the details of each of them and drag this video too long i hope you found this uh, video about uh, the complications of sh uh, quite informative if so uh, make sure you give it a thumbs up and uh, thank you for watching